Now every once in a while, life will throw you a curveball. And sometimes someone will hand you an equation that's really complicated and actually have two variables in it, and you want to solve for one of them. I want to show you how you can use the quadratic formula when it's a quadratic type equation to solve for one variable. The secret, by the way, is just to use the quadratic formula again. So I'm going to write it right up there again. There it is. And all I'm going to do is use the quadratic formula and just be really careful with what's A, what's B, and what's C. It's not a big deal at all. It's just a pain in somewhere. Here's the question let's consider. Let's take 3x squared plus xy plus 4y squared equals 0. Now notice there you can see the two different variables. There's x and y. I don't know either one of them, but we want to f apparently figure out you know, which x's and y's will satisfy that. But what I'm asked to do in this question, the question asks, and I'll just write it over there, the question asks, what is the value for x in terms of y's? So basically solve this equation for x, but the answer will have y's in it. And you may say, why? And I'd say, exactly, why? So what we want to do to solve this for x is we're going to consider y as a constant. And if I do this, in fact, maybe I should even write this a little differently. Let me just write this just so I can really, you might not need to do this, but I'm going to write the y out in front. I'm going to treat it like it's a coefficient, you see? It's like something times x. And if I do this, then it's easy to see who's playing what in our little play. Tonight, the role of A is going to be played by 3. But more exciting, the role of B is going to be actually Y, because that's the thing multiplying the X. And finally tonight in our little play, the role of C is going to be played by the entire big, large, burly 4Y squared. Remember, the quadratic equation isn't solved until the fat C sings. <laughs> <laughs> joke there. I'll explain to you later. Okay, now, so now armed with this, all I'm going to do is just plug it into the quadratic formula. Not a big deal. So what does x equal? Well, I mean, it's a big deal, but it's not a, well, you know, it's not a crazy deal. It's not an absurd, I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to put you over the edge, but it's a big deal. That's a medium deal. Let's just, let's just compromise and say it's a medium deal, not a little deal because it's a pain, but it's not like going to kill you. Okay. And you know, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. I saw that in the fortune cookie once. Okay, so it's negative b, which is in this case negative y, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's y squared. Wherever I see a b, I'm going to put in y. Minus 4 times ac. So that's going to be 4 times 3 times 4y squared. Well, 3 times 4y squared is 12y squared. So I have to multiply this 4 by 12y squared. Divide all that by 2a. OK, well, now we can simplify this a little teeny bit. And let's see if how this would work out. Well, let's see. x would equal minus y plus or minus. And now what do I see here? Notice I can factor out a y squared here. And if I do that, in fact, the y squared can be pulled all the way out of the square root, but I won't do that at this step. Let me just factor it out. y squared, there it is as a factor. And what am I left with? I'm left with 1 minus, and what is uh, 4 times 12? It's 48 all divided by 6. OK? All right, well, the square root of y squared is just y. And since I'm multiplying here, I can use laws of exponents or laws of radicals to say the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. So this is the square root of y squared times the square root of that thing. So let's see what that equals. What I see here is that x equals negative y plus or minus. And now notice that that square root of y squared just becomes a y. And then what do I have? I've got square root of 1 minus 48, which is minus 47. Again, imaginary. All over, and what's the bottom? It's just 6. Now, I could actually factor out that y, too. If I factor out the y, I see y times 
minus 1, because I took out the y, invisible 1 remains, plus or minus, and then I could write 47, and then i here, all over 6. So those are the two answers, one with the plus sign there, and then one with the minus sign there. And so if you want to solve this equation, just for x in terms of y, you see that the two things are equal, except I've got to multiply y by some complex number. So it turns out there's a complex number involved in figuring out what x equals in terms of y. Anyway, whether it's complex or not, the point is I just used the quadratic equation in a very careful way. And the way I did it, I remind you, was just to very carefully label the roles of a, b, and c, and plug into the quadratic formula and then just spend a little time solving very carefully. That's all there is to it.